Hello YouTube, this is Frugorn. Here we are with the first of a number of fully loaded Airbus A320 videos. And this one is the beginner's one. So there'll be two videos in this in this mini-series of beginner's Airbus. Um, I get a lot of questions about the Airbus. I get the questions such as how do you set up the flight plan and manage the FMC? We are going to cover that in this video. And also, um, I often get asked what is a good aircraft to start with if you want to get into tube liners. And I always recommend this one, even though I'm not a big fan of Airbuses. The reason I recommend this one is that it's very easy to configure this aircraft in one of three different configurations. Basically, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So we're going to set the aircraft up in beginner mode today, and you'll see exactly what that means in a little while. Um, and so for this video, it'll be the program in the FMC, taxi, takeoff. In the next video, it's going to be the descent and landing into Gibraltar. We're flying from London Heathrow to Gibraltar, which is a British uh, territory on the coast of Spain. They're not very happy about that. But even so, it's an interesting approach, an interesting landing. So it should make for an interesting video. Let's go over to the other PC. Because this is a fully loaded video series, I am using at least two PCs, currently just two PCs, to do all this. So this second PC here is running the weather. As as you can currently see there is active sky running already you can see the date and time that I've got the weather loaded for so it's the 11th of May at 934 in the morning weather's already loaded up roots already in here EGLL to LXGB just set that up in active skies direct just so it can figure out the route the weather on route okay so having done that the next thing the most important thing we need to do is set up our route. So for this, I always use FS build. And people ask me, what do you use to do your routes? FS build. So EGLL is where we're going from. Delete the departure runway. Delete the departure SID. Where are we going to? LXGB. Delete the arrival runway. Delete the arrival star. It's already selected Airbus as the aircraft. I'm not using FS build for route planning, or sorry, fuel planning and fuel burner stuff like that. So it's going to be fairly simple. We're just going to click on auto generate. That will give me a route. Now, if you're flying with a virtual airline, like I fly British Airways virtual, they already give me a route. So I'm actually going to just plug that route in the middle here instead. So I'll actually overwrite this. But doing it, the, doing the auto-generated first way does give me something very interesting, which is the altitude. So flight level 310. So I'm just going to override this now. That's the route British Airways are giving me, build. So there it is. You can see it over there from there down to here. Now we're going to build options in FS build, exclude the SID and the star. We never want those. Click build again, export to flight sim, FS2004 slash FSX. Now I do that because I also use the Avlosoft EFB, and Avlosoft EFB wants to pick up a flight plan. If I was using Pro ATCX, that would also like to see a flight plan, although I could just cut and paste this in as well. So now it's actually flight level 390. Notice that changed. Um, so there's our route, EGLL, SAM. Now, this is the interesting part of the route. SAM is the first waypoint, which is the end of the SID. We'll get into SIDs and STARS in a little bit. That, UN621, notice the three numbers at the end, or two numbers at the end on some of these, on other routes. That is an airway. Flying direct from A to B across the world doesn't make a lot of sense because the world is round. So you typically use airways. Airways compensate for that sometimes, somewhat. Um, also, they're for ATC. They're for air traffic control. Now, realistically, the chance of two aircraft being in the same place at the same height at exactly the same time is so infinitesimally small as to never worry about it. So they came up with this concept of air corridors, which are imaginary corridors in the sky that they force all the aircraft down together, thereby greatly increasing the chance of a smash and justifying the job of air traffic control. So that's what these are, air corridors or airways. And I'll show you how to plug those into the Airbus in a second. Now, I told you we're not going to do fuel planning and stuff. Let me go back over to FSX here. I've already loaded this up. Up. the Aerosoft aircraft comes with a fuel planner all you need to do in there is just tell it how many passengers you've got I'm carrying 123 how much cargo you've got I'm carrying 4,250 kilograms of cargoes and where you're going from where you're going to it will calculate the fuel and then you just click on load fuel I can't show you that because of the way I'm recording so unfortunately can't show you that take my word for it let's get into this aircraft here and we'll start setting this up so I'm just gonna move my microphone reposition myself in front of the aircraft Oh, crunchy, crunchy. Okay. So here we go. This is a cold and dark aircraft, and we are going to consider configure this into beginner mode. Again, that's the reason I tend to recommend this aircraft more than any other for people wanting to get into airliners. You can make it very, very simple. First, go to the overhead. It is a dark cockpit concept. If there is a light on, it usually means it's for your attention, something you need to look at. At the moment, the only light on is external power. So we could actually use external power if we wanted to. We are not going to. What we are going to do, though, is turn on battery one, battery two. They come on, master switch for the APU, and then start the APU. That's going to start the small jet engine in the back of the aircraft. 
and in a little while everything will be good to go. You'll see a light come on down here. There we go. So we're going to turn APU bleeds on, turn some fuel pumps on, and now we can just run down in a number of sweeps, it's actually three or four sweeps from the top down and across. Okay, just checking all these buttons up here. So we need to turn the ADIRS on. These are what are used to navigate an aircraft. They're basically GPS units and other wonderful gizmos which track the aircraft's inertial position. Turn all those to nav. As you do so, on back will go on, then go off. Like so. All these are good. They are all dark. There are no warning lights. We are good to go. Let's go down here. These are all good. There are no warning lights. We have a light here saying external power is available. We don't care right now, so we have two generator warning lights because there are no generators running. That is fine. All the way down here, we don't want wing anti-ice, probe heat, or anything like that on right now. We will turn on um, the beacon, like so. Let's go across here. We will turn on CBOS signs, no smoking signs. Get those all good to go. We will arm the emergency exit signs, like so. Let's go back down here now. Everything is good. If we were doing the advanced version of this or the intermediate, we would also be running some tests at this point, which we're not going to do today because we're in beginner mode. So all the way down here, no lights, everything looks good. Now we can go down to these big screens at the bottom. Now I have this hotkeyed. I always get asked this question, what do you use to change your views? It is a tool called EasyDoc. Don't ask me again. EasyDoc manages my views. So I have a, a preset already set up, which takes me down to those two screens here. We are in cold and dark start currently. Just checking my other screens here, good. So what you can do, go to checklist in the Aerosoft Airbus X Extended, turn checklist on, turn your co-pilot on. This aircraft is now in beginner mode with a virtual pilot and co-pilot who will manage every single switch, knob and button in the aircraft without you having to think about a thing other than flying. This is why this is a beginner mode video. So we just say copy preparation. Okay, let's start with the cockpit preparation. And off he goes. Both on. Okay, so while he's doing that, APU I'm going to turn on. the sound down because he's a little bit loud. Set on. We can go and set up our route and Both set up the FMC. On. This is the next second biggest question I always get asked. How do you set this up? We turn the ADIRS to nav mode, which means we can get rid of this. We now go to init. That's the first place you want to go to. And tell in, setting in here where you are flying from and where you are flying to. So we are flying from EGLL. We are flying to L. X G B checked and done is on our alternate airfield is for on. this flight let me just check here Set is L E J R so Set in case off. something goes wrong our alternate is L E J R off. nothing's going to go wrong is off okay align the IRS we are good our flight checked. number this is a british airways flight so B A W checked. let me look at my notes 490 so speedbird 490 there we go. Cost index is basically how efficient the flight management computer, flight FMC, needs to be in managing the engines and your climb profile, descent profile, and stuff like that. British Airways, who I fly with, tend to always use a cost index of, I think it's 20 on the Airbus. So I'm going to put that in. That actually goes all the way up to 999, which basically means don't save any money at all. We'll put that in. We're going to save some money. Our cruise altitude is flight level 390. So we'll key that in here. Like so, we're good to go. Now there is a second page here. You click on this right button, block fuel. The Airbus, Aerosoft Airbus X extended fuel planner will give you something called block fuel to enter. When you key in the number of passengers, the amount of cargo, where you're flying from and where you're flying to, it will give you a red number at the bottom of its dialogue saying block fuel to enter, which in our case is 9.3. We put that in there, we are all good. Now we can go on to our in fact, you can look at this stuff. It's predicting a taxi time of 0 0.2 hours. Uh, trip time there is wrong because we don't have a route in here. So this is all actually useless right now until we set up the flight plan, which we will do now. Go to the flight plan. Okay. It knows we're flying EGLL to LXGB. We need to put the waypoints in between in. So click on EGLL. And you've got two boxes over here for next waypoint, new destination. Our next waypoint is SAM. S-A-M. Sierra. Alpha Mike. We'll put that in there. It might give you on some of these waypoints a number of choices. Now we know that the waypoint we're going to is pretty damn close to the airport, so it's probably this one, which is 45 miles away from the airport, as opposed to this one, which is 5,000 miles away from the airport. So that one. 
Now click on that waypoint again, and this is how you figure out all those airways that you just saw in FS Build. So you click on airways. The first airway that we are flying via is UN621. Key that in. And we are flying via the airway to Bravo, Alpha, Sierra, India, Kilo. Like so. From that waypoint, we are going via Uniform Zulu, I'm going to say Zebra, 150 here. And we are flying to Novan, which is November, Oscar, Victor, Alpha, November. Feel free to follow along. The next waypoint we're going to follow, sorry, next airway we're going to follow is Uniform November 864. Put that in there as Devaya. The and we are taking that all the way up to Pimos, Papa, India, Mike, Oscar, Sierra. There you go. Sometimes there's a delay. Now, having done that, this is a temporary flight plan right now. You can see temporary flight plan. We're going to insert this into our main flight plan, like so. And then what we do is you use these buttons to scroll. So the up arrow scrolls everything up. It's kind of convoluted. You're maybe used to clicking down arrow to go down. But click the up arrow, start scrolling up. You're looking for discos or discontinuities. Notice it's put in a bunch of waypoints that we didn't type in. Oh, by the way, that is not a discontinuity. That is a waypoint called disco. Anyway, we'll scroll up. There we go. Flight plan disco, flight plan disco. We're going to clear both of those. Just click on clear. Click on the disco, away it goes. You are going to have a discontinuity at the end because that is your alternate airport. That is just fine. And you're going to have a dash white line saying end of flight plan there, which is just fine. So far, so good. Now, you cannot fly at this point. Or you, you can fly, but you can't use the autopilot to do uh, a managed climb. Or in Boeing terms, you can't use, um, oh my goodness, VNAV and V, the other one. VNAV? I'll never VNAV. Yeah, VNAV. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired. You can't use VNAV. Um, the aircraft does not know how to plot its climb right now because we've not given it any information on how to get from A to B. So we're going to keel that in right now. So back over onto the other computer, we're not using air traffic control. We do have Active Sky running and we do have an EFB running. So here's my EFB. Let's go into my route setup. I've already got Airbus selected. I'm going to choose a flight sim route. And it is not there, which is awkward. Let me go back over here, probably because I didn't rebuild the flight plan. So back over here, make sure export to is already set in there to FSX. Click on build. It will tell you it has created a flight plan, EGLL LXGB. So back in the EFB now, we can try once again. I could edit that out, but I won't. There we go. There's the flight plan at the top. We'll load that up. Now, because we told FS Build excludes SIDS and STARS, the Avalosoft EFB is not going to give me any crap there. It doesn't know of any SIDS and STARS that we're using, just the waypoints of the route. There it is. And if I sync this to my aircraft, you are here. Great stuff. So now we want to actually plot our um, departure. Notice the wind here. There is the wind currently. So what we do here, I'm going to go up to departure. You take off into the wind. There's the wind direction. So you can guess we're going to be using runway 27, either left or right. Probably left because we're closest to that. But again, that would normally be up to air traffic control. But we will select it here. So select our SID. Wind is favoring 27 left, as we thought. We are flying to SAM. So 27 left. You need to find a SID now that ends at SAM. There's only one. SAM 2G. Click on that. Click on OK. There's our SID now. Fabulous. Activate that. Notice there are some altitude constraints. So at or above 4,000 at this, at 6,000 at this one. Let me scroll down a little bit here. No altitude constraints beyond that. If I turn off syncing to my aircraft, I'll be able to scroll. There we go. Pretty good. So it's a step climb at or above 4,000 at that waypoint, at 6,000 at that waypoint, then climbing after that. Great. So back into the Airbus. We can plan, plot this stuff in. We know we are using the SAM 2G SID. Normally, as I said, air traffic control would assign that to you, particularly if you're on VATSIM or using Pro ATCX. Click on EGLL, click on departure, tell it the runway we're using, in this case 27 left, and scroll the list up until you find SAM 2G. There it is, and insert. Now we got some waypoints, which are the SID. Scroll those up, looking for discos. 
There are no discos. We have two Sams here. Not a big deal. We could probably delete one of them, but we're not going to. It doesn't make a huge deal. No discos. We are all good. Now, at this point, you don't have to key in the star. In fact, many people won't. They will set the star up in flight. We will go ahead and set it up right now, just to be sure. So let me bring up, back on the other computer, bring up the weather report. Currently, it's locked on EGLL. The cool thing with Active Sky is it shows you a little graphic for the wind direction, so it's easy to visualize which runway type you're going to be using. We are going LXGB. The wind is from that away. The wind is from the east at 6 knots, so we want to be landing, if possible, in an easterly direction. The wind is coming from the east, so we land to the east. That's another way of thinking about it. So let's go over here. Let's go look at uh, Gibraltar here. Well, it only has the one runway. How convenient is that? We're going to be landing on runway 09. Simple. So we can figure this out fairly well. We know that our last waypoint, if we actually go up to root setup here, um, our last waypoint, which is usually the entry to the star, the terminal approach, is PMOS. So back on flight log, you could use charts for this. I thoroughly recommend you do use charts for this until you know what you're doing. But back on here on the arrival, click on the arrival, click on select star, Runway 09, as it's telling us, from Pimos. How convenient is that? Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Now, we're going to need to get a transition going. We're going to be landing that away. This star takes us that away. So we need a transition. A transition is a series of waypoints at the end of a star to line you up onto the runway. So in Ablesoft EFB, that's also called the approach. And it doesn't have one. Okay, good. All right. So it's kind of going to be a little bit awkward. We will actually be referring to paper charts later on in the flight. So in the second part of this video, we'll be looking at paper charts for how to fly that proper approach once we get into Gibraltar. And the reason it's important to fly the proper approach is, as I said, Gibraltar is British territory. It's on the very tip of Spain, which Spain doesn't like. And then you have other countries down here, which also don't like British aircraft flying into their airspace unannounced. So there is actually a very, very precise procedure for approaching and landing in Gibraltar. And we will look at the charts to cover that. Oh dear. Oh dear. So we won't do anything there. Although back in the Airbus, we could at this point set up the start, which we will do. The way you do that, scroll the list all the way up. Although we don't have the transition, we can still set up the star. End of the flight plan. Down here, destination LXGB, arrival, 09. Ha, it's not going to give us anything. It's not giving us a damn thing. Okay, so we are actually going to be flying all of this just for fun. Let's get rid of that temporary flight plan. We are going to be flying all of this with charts when we get there, which is probably a very, very good thing to do, or I will be using ATC. We'll see when we get there. Right now, all we're concerned about is managing that um, departure and climb. So everything's good. There are no more discontinuities. We are not finished on the FMC just yet. Just to recap the steps that we did, we did a knit. There are two pages there telling it where we're going from, where we're going to, the altitude we're going to be flying at, and we did the flight plan. We have enough information now to plot a climb. You can see it here. Here's our speed. Here's our altitude. Gradually increasing as we go through the waypoints. If we scroll these up, you will see the waypoint constraint there that's a waypoint constraint right there we cannot we have to be at 6000 feet at that point so everything is looking lovely now we go into performance here's our v speeds to calculate our v speeds properly we need to know how we're taking off so we're going off in the flaps one configuration which is fairly standard it automatically calculates the flex to temperature flex takeoff temperature sorry um, which will derate the engines for us. And there are our V speeds, 145, 149, 150. Because it's an Airbus and it's pretty good at managing itself, it's already keyed that stuff in as the V ref bugs on the uh, primary flight display. Now, our transition altitude, leaving Gatwick, sorry, leaving Heathrow is 6,000 feet. We don't have to change anything there, so that is all good. Let's look at prog here. That is all good. There is nothing out of date here. Our flight plan is good. Our radio navigation. If you wanted to tune radios here and cross-check everything, you can. We're not going to. Fuel predictions are good. It's 3 hours, 23 minutes of flying time. Plenty of fuel on board when we get there, which is wonderful. Secondary flight plan we don't have. At this point, you are good to go. 
So all that remains now then is to go look at the next set of checklists down here. Sorry. See where our co-pilot and first officer are up. Alright, they want us to close some doors. I am using GSX. I'm not using GSX for loading people or anything like that. Um, so we will just go and close the doors. That will move the, co the pilot and first officer onto their next step. So we're going to close that front left door. Control J causes the gate to retract. Come on, gate. There it goes. And they'll work Is through the on. next set of lists. External power. Disconnected and off. Cabin signs. Is on. Trust levers. Idle. Parking brake. Set on. Barrel reference. Set one zero one zero. That's something I forgot one, to do and should have done myself. Zero. But they will catch you up. Check. Oh, let's turn all these on. Is on. They don't turn those on for us, which is a bit of a pain. It's going to turn on all the displays here. Okay. So now, what the Aerosoft Airbus will do is it'll ask you what you want to do next. Start and push. If you do start and push this way, then the aircraft will basically push itself. We're not going to use that. We are going to use GSX. Now, we know that we are taking off on runway 27 left. Looking at the EFB very quickly. That's our current location. 27 left is here. So we're going to push back with our tail to the left. So back in the aircraft then, we will just say um, we won't do anything. We won't even click on those. We will just fire up GSX. And we are going to do push. Now if I press the right button, there we go. To the left. Here comes the push truck. Now while he's doing that, I'm going to finish setting up this. We are flying at a flight level of 390. That's going to take a long time, so I right click and now I can change thousands instead. That is all set. The way we read this is dash dot dash dot number dot. That's how this needs to be set up. This is managed, this is managed, that's where we want to go but the climb is managed. That's what that means. Managed meaning the autopilot is taking care of the speed, our heading, and ultimately our altitude because we have a step climb according to our flight plan. That's what the dots mean. That's the manage aspect. And we have no numbers here because those are figured out for us. We have a number here because we're instructing the autopilot or auto flight system. That's where we want to go. Departure check completed. Flight has been inserted. Release parking brake. All right, brakes released. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start, Start at will. So now we're going to Aerosoft's start procedure here. Flight deck to ground go ahead. We have ATC clearance for start and taxi. Please confirm ground equipment and service is clear. Roger. Ground equipment and stairs clear. Doors closed and wheel shocks removed. Start both engines. Is okay. Alright, so he wants us to start engine number two now. So we right click the starter here to start and then click engine two. engine 2. The engine will spool up and hopefully stabilize and then we will start engine 1 and we're good to go. Simple. Now this is the beginner mode so the pilot and first officer are doing many of the things for us. As you get more familiar with the beginner mode try preempting them. So set the switches and the knobs and the dials in the positions they should stabilize. be in so that they're not switching, switching switches for you but you already have them switch yourself. Here comes engine 1. That's a really good way to get familiar with this. And then intermediate, we will turn off the first officer. So the checklists then are just a simply spoken checklist that you respond to, not with voice, but by doing the action required. And then advanced, obviously, is we get rid of those two people and we fly it all ourselves. But that's way down the path. Engine one stabilized. All right, both engines are up. We are good. Good start of both engines. All systems are nominal. Thank you for the services. All clear. Signal to the right, please. Roger, good start. All clear signals of the right. Have a good flight. Now bear in mind those ground radio messages there were from Aerosoft's own system, not from GSX. That's GSX. So set the parking brake now. 
They will now disconnect. We'll pop outside and take a look. You see the little guy come over. Here he comes. And he will disconnect the tow truck. Alright, flight control test now. They've been doing their checklist while we were outside, so full left. Full left. And you can see the flight controls on that bottom display over here. See them? So full right. Full right. Neutral. Neutral. Fall back or up. Full up. up is clear. Fall down. Right is clear. Full down. Neutral. Neutral. Now I need to get my right feet up. on the rudder pedals. Full left. Full left. Full right. Full right. Neutral. Neutral. Flaps should be one. Flaps one. I hadn't set them, so they'll do it for uh, me. Anti-ice is off. Process. Checked. Beacon door page. Checked. Hand signal. Received. Checklist complete. Okay, we are good to go. The next checklist occurs when we um, are greater than 10 knots ground speed. So we're going to start our taxi now. We're going to go taxiing to Alpha, all the way down to the end of 27 left, and take off. So here we go. Brakes off. Let's turn those off by hand. You need about 40% to start moving, and then you can back off it. It does pick up speed nicely. Want to be taxiing no more than about 20 on the ground. Don't want to be turning at any more than about 15. Oh, now I turned a little bit too Taxi soon there. Checklist. Hang on, let's do this checklist. No slides. Set on. Trust levers. As required. Brake checks. Brake checks. Press pedal. Check zero. Check. Auto brakes. Max. Takeoff data. Reviewed. FCU. Checked. Flight instruments. Checked. Check. TO config. Set. Check is complete. Okay, now as I was saying, I turned a little bit too soon there. It's worth remembering that the nose wheel is actually behind you. It's a little bit like an MD-11. Not as severe as an MD-11. But the nose wheel is a bit behind you, so you do need to overshoot your turning a little bit from the pilot's point of view. Now, while we're taxiing, it's quite a long taxi. We can set up some more stuff, so I'm going to turn the range on the navigation display here down to 10. We're going to manually fly this, Sid, because it's such a beautiful aircraft to manually fly. But we will have the aircraft manage its speed, which means the aircraft's pretty much going to be managing pitch. And all we need to, well, pitch and throttles, and all we need to do is uh, roll, really. There will be some pitch adjustments, but not very many. The scenery here, by the way, is UK2000 London Heathrow, or UK2000 EGLL. It is extremely frame rate intensive. So I apologize if this looks a little bit jerky right now. It will improve in the air. You can see here our ground speed, 20 knots, 21. So I'm going to come off the throttles a little bit. Now the Airbus, as I said in the first impressions video, is flown with a joystick, not a yoke. <coughs> so I am actually flying with, <coughs> excuse me, a Thrustmaster T16000 joystick and a Thrustmaster Warthog throttle which is uh, more realistic, I think, than those little finger knobs, finger throttles that you get on most yokes. Because if you look at the throttle down here, it's, it's a pretty chunky piece of kit. Okay, so we're coming up on the end of the runway now. We're going to take the second turning on the right. You will hear RAAS kick in and tell us we're approaching the runway. That's from uh, the FS crew people. It's a runway alert system. And is included with the Airbus. All right, so that's the first turning. Not gonna take this one. We're gonna take this one. So off the throttles, don't wanna turn up more than 15. Teeny tiny little bit of brake, a little bit too much right brake there. 
Now remember, overshoot a little bit and then start your turn. Please prepare for takeoff. Normally at this point we'll be holding, waiting for clearance to line up. We are just going to line up and then we'll go to a full stop, which will trigger the next checklist. Approaching two, seven, left. Keeping the speed down so I can get a good line up here. Coming on the power so it don't grind to a halt. On runway two seven left. All right, so let's line up. And full stop. I was hoping that would trigger by now. Let's just start the checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Brake temperature? Checked. Brake fans? Are off. Engine mode selector? Checked normal. TCAS? TA and RA told above. Exterior lights? Set on. Lighting tables? Stowed. Stowed. Checklist complete. We're good to go. What we do now is turn on the auto throttle. That changes how these throttle levers work. <coughs> they are no longer feeding direct power to the engines. We now have detents that we need to get. So I don't know if I can zoom down there a little bit. Bear with me. See these detents? On runway, two, seven, left. On Climb runway, thrust, two, flex. Seven, left. We're going to go up to flex because they're having a reduced power takeoff, which is how the airlines typically do it to preserve the life of the engines and extend maintenance time. So we're going to go all the way up to flex. You'll hear a couple of clicks, and it will say here, flex. That means we are rolling with takeoff power. Here we go. See, thrust, thrust levers moving. It just lit up on the PFD. Thrust climb, okay, flex. Okay, let's go. Take off. FMA check. Power set. Hundred knots. Rotator 145. You can see the V1 marker coming up. V1. Rotate. Smoothly rotate up and now follow the flight director lines. There we go. Positive rate. Yeah. up. A little bit more nose up now to put the dot on that green pitch line. A little bit of left bank there. Now above 1,000 feet, I will reduce the thrust levers, which will put us into climb thrust. Gear is up, lights off. There's 1,000 feet, so throttles back now. Climb thrust. We have that altitude constraint coming up at 6,000 feet. You can see the uh, magenta 6,000 at the top of the PFD. Okay, so nose down now to pick up some speed. There's the speed climbing. Flaps up. After takeoff check. Engine mode selector. Check normal. Boilers. Disarm. Flaps. Check retracted. Landing gear. Gear up lights off. Exterior lights. Set off. Packs. Both on. Anti ice. Are off. T cast. Checked. Altimeter. One zero one zero. One zero one zero. All right, I'm going to start a little turn here now. 
following those green lines on the PFD. A little bit of nose up, a little bit of roll. You're basically rolling until that green line comes back. The green line is showing you how much roll to put in, not where you need to be pointing the nose. So it needs to be coming out of the roll now. You see that? It's turning to the right. Going to the right. Well, quite a lot to the right now. Nose down. No panicky movements. Nice and smooth. If we get a little off track, it's not a huge deal. I'm going to need to turn anti-ice on shortly, I think. A lot more roll now. There it is. Now it's going to get us stabilized on our flight path. Here we go. Now nose down. There is our transition altitude, and it's going to hold us at 6,000, which is our actual constraint, which I actually broke a little bit flying Mandy. So we're going to put this into autopilot now. Autopilot on. That will drop us down to our constraint, and we're good to go. That is all there is to it. So let's go look at the EFB on the other computer real quick. This is where we are. We're already at this constraint. So we're going to hold 6,000 all the way up to here. And then you should see now the auto flight systems take over and start a climb, full power climb up to our flight level 390. Normally at this point, you'd be interacting with ATC. They would be clearing you to certain levels or not. So you'd be feeding that stuff in over here. And then left clicking, sorry, right clicking to select a desired altitude rather than left click, which is manage climb. Lots of cloud here. It is a pretty nice day. We shouldn't be worrying too much about ice, I think. Beautiful day for flying. Starting our turn now up to that 6,000 altitude constraint waypoint, which is this one. Then after that we will start our climb up, so less than 10 miles. Now obviously you could still be flying this manually at this point if you wanted to. I turned on the uh, autopilot because it's a little bit easier for me to talk about. And uh, show you stuff. And notice that the autopilot, sorry, the co-pilot and first officer <coughs> have managed all our switches for us. As I said, this is a dark cockpit concept. There are no lights on up here. Everything is good. Landing lights are not retracted yet. They are still on because we're less than 10,000 feet. Everything else has been set for us. Wonderful. Because it's an Airbus, there's no need to manually set in uh, pressure altitude. That's all managed for us automatically, which is great. It's a pretty easy aircraft to fly. And this... And this is why I recommend this aircraft to newcomers who, who want to learn how to fly a tube liner. This is a very good aircraft to learn how to fly a tube liner in because you have all the procedures, you have the FMC, and because you can scale it. You can set it up initially as a beginner's aircraft with it doing much of the systems and switches and knobs and setup for you. And then you can gradually step it all the way up to advanced where you're doing everything yourself. Let's look at the EFB real quick. All right, we're a little off track. Partly because of the wind, I think, there, and partly because of my manual flying initially. If you look back in the aircraft right now, though, you can see it's pulling us back on track already. So coming up on that waypoint which has the altitude constraint, we will start our climb. Next checklist is waiting for us to climb to cruise altitude. Outside air temperature is still above zero. So I think we're good. No anti-ice required at this point. 
Very Simpson sky. And here we go on our climb now. Notice it just does that automatically. Just like the Boeings. Climbing up now to flight level 390. Now the only other interesting thing to watch, and this scares a lot of uh, newcomers or beginners, is once you hit 10,000 feet, then the speed constraint of 250 knots is removed. So once you hit 10,000 feet, what the aircraft will do to pick up speed is it will actually pitch nose over and try to level out to gain a lot of speed, then it will climb again. That's quite normal. So if you're not used to flying these kind of aircraft, don't worry, just expect it. Currently at 8,500 feet. So in a minute or two, it's going to do that pitch. Still got some clouds here, so I'm keeping an eye on this temperature. It is dropping. Six degrees currently. Five degrees. Now obviously the higher we go, the lower it will go. You only need anti-ice on if you're flying in icing conditions, which basically means temperature at or near zero. There's the pitch. Lights off. At or near zero with moisture. Moisture comes from clouds. So if you fly in through a cloud and the temperature is very low, like two degrees, three degrees even, um, given the speed we're traveling and the wind chill involved in that, you might want to consider turning anti-ice on. The Airbus here though is very, very good at telling you if it's about to ice up. You'll get a warning down here saying ice detected, at which point all you need to do is go up here and go click, click, click. Left click on these switches, pushes them down, right click pulls them back up. So we are still in managed speed, managed heading, managed altitude. We good? So in the next part of this video then we will be looking at the charts to fly into Gibraltar without infringing on anybody else's airspace and hopefully landing on runway 9. In fact, maybe during this flight the weather will change and we'll be landing on runway 27, which will be even better. So until then, my name is Frugal. As always, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please click subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.